right now I am standing in one of the World War II rooms here at the Gettysburg Museum of History. And, and there are constantly items coming into this museum that will just blow your mind. Uh, so today we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing to uh, see a, an example of some of the things that are coming into the Gettysburg Museum of History. Okay, we're ready to film another unboxing. Now, we've done several of these. Um, they tend to be get a lot of good comments, and um, I have a really good one today. I, I've been saving a few items, and um, uh, I think this one's gonna be a, a, a pretty decent one. So we're gonna do several boxes. I have um, these three, and I have another one that's really big. So um, I'm gonna pull out the trusty uh, Falschenjager knife. My choice weapon for opening boxes because they're super sharp and we're going to just start with this one right here and uh, cut right through it. It goes right through the tape. Falschenjager knives are razor sharp. They're meant to cut through uh, parachute material and um, risers and everything for guys that would get stuck in the trees so they, they tend to work really well. And Packing material on this one. And, ah, we have a desk eagle. Look at that. There's a so called Nuremberg eagle or desk eagle. These were um, commercially produced to put on desks of high officials and um, various people. And um, you know, the, this one's made of solid metal. It's a uh, pretty heavy um, and and it's got the marble base so uh, yeah it's it's a pretty good one and again this is one of the cho choice items um, you know that a, a lot of collectors really love these but you have to be very careful with them because they do make replicas of these um, I can tell right away that this is good um, there they can sometimes be hard to authenticate but this one's a hundred percent right this I can tell see what else is in this box. Ah, here is an... Oh, what is this? Oh, this is a... This is a... Again, another desk piece. It's, it's a ashtray, actually, and it's got an inscription. It's an SS guy. Um, I guess it could be SA or SS, but this inscription tells me this is an SS presentation piece right here. How, how appropriate that uh, we have, you know, this Nazi figure on an ashtray uh, to represent <laughs> them going into the, the ash heap of history. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we'll open this one next. This I believe is some documents. Okay, so this is for something else. Um, <laughs> let's see. All right, so this this may be a combination of things. Let, let's put this aside for now because I think this goes with something else that's in another box. But right here, we have an autograph of Hitler, it looks like. Oh, man. And um, you have Hitler with a bunch of students, and it's signed, 1938, and, and it's... Uh, it must be like Germania Day or something like that because it looks like they got some... Um, traditional outfits on. Now this is in Berlin, it's not in Bavaria, so it's um, it's got those kind of cultural outfits and then there's a, a 
letter there from the office of the Reich Chancellery in Berlin, and it's sending it to Fra Haas. So she must have been maybe one of the teachers, and um, the it was sent to her. Wow. And um, yeah, and and th this photograph is very interesting. I mean, look at the faces of those people, and of course there's Hitler standing there, and you know if, if you look at at the different expressions, it's pretty funny actually the way that guy's making a face, and you know Hitler was like, you know he was the leader of Germany, so I guess it was a pretty big deal for those people to meet him. But I've never seen one quite like this. Um, you know, you see a lot of pictures of Hitler with various diplomats and various people, but to see him with a school group, you know, it's, it's very unusual, very interesting. So let's move on to the next box. So. Sorry about the awkwardness of that, but um, yeah, so I, I was emailed about this. This is um, a desk clock that came from the Bertesgarden Rights Chancellery, and um, that's what this paperwork is for. So, um, yeah, there. This is the guy, um, yeah, here it is. Tablecloth from the Rice Chancellery, Birch's Garden. And here's a picture of it there. And here's a blueprint that tells you where it was and everything. And this was bought from a local that I believe took it out of there. But it has some other photos of the back of the clock and it's got all kinds of documentation about what's going on here and uh, there's some other papers out of the archives there that came with it but um, anyway this uh, this was there in Bertus Garden and so uh, it's it's there's no Nazi symbols on it or anything like that, so I guess maybe a local took it, but it's uh, it's very uh, Art Deco looking, you know, it has that it just screams 1930s, doesn't it? Interesting piece there All right, I uh, want to just throw in one more thing here about this clock uh, so as Eric mentioned, the table clock came from the Reich's Chancellery near Berchtesgaden and was on the desk in the study of the Minister of State, a guy by the name of Dr. Heinrich Lamars. Uh, I think that's, or, or Lammers, maybe that's how you pronounce it. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, right here, right there, is this desk clock. I want to take a quick break from the unboxing to show something in Eric's archives that I think is just cool as heck. Uh, what we're looking at is a press photo. This is a guy by the name of Lieutenant Reardon uh, from Kansas City. And these are his three half-brothers, and they were triplets. So when he was bringing home souvenirs from the war, well, he had to uh, bring a lot to give to his brothers. Uh, so here you can see this Nazi flag. Here is a German mess tin. Uh, I'm also seeing, you know, some German pistols and helmets. This one here with uh, some, some chicken wire on it. So just for the, the sake of context, when we are looking at these items, uh, th these are souvenir items that soldiers, American soldiers, brought home from war. This guy obviously isn't a Nazi and, and didn't support the, uh, the ideology of the Third Reich, yet he brought these items home 
as a remembrance of uh, the history and of his uh, time in the war. So, so when we're looking at these things, uh, you know, we're, again, we don't support the ideology, uh, but we are remembering the history. Very, very fascinating photo. I love this thing. So the one more thing in this box is a very interesting piece, I think. So this is a sleeve of War Merit Cross First Class medals as it came from the factory. And again, this is from the Deschler Horde. Um, it says Deschler Munich. And um, they came in sleeves of 10. And this is how they came from that factory. And what you have here is the War Merit Cross First Class with swords and it's untouched basically since World War II. This one was loose so I decided to open it. Um, this is how it came. I do have one other one here that I, I brought out. Here's, here's a sealed one but I wanted to make sure you could see what was actually in there. I mean it is cracked a little but this one's never been opened. But again, here's 10 of these things from, right from the factory. And um, back in the 1980s, I believe it was, um, a bunch of things were found at the Deschler factory in Munich and, uh, or their warehouse. Um, some things put away and there, there were a few sleeves of these found and, and there were some table metals as well and some other um, smaller items. But um, you know, you, you, you don't see stuff like this. I mean, this is pretty amazing to have this preserved like that. And uh, just something that you never see. So this one is going to be the grand finale of this particular video. This is a really big piece. It's a neat piece and can't wait to open it and show you guys. favorites right here. This is a Railway Eagle. Get this wrap out of the way. So Railway Eagles were used on train cars and trolleys and various railway uh, uh, transportation and they were denazified at the end of World War II. Now, now one thing that they wanted to make sure happened was that the railway was still running. Um, you had a lot of displaced people at the end of World War II. You had a lot of U.S. servicemen who were moving around and you had a lot of German POWs that were moving around and men that were surrendering and being processed and going home. So the last thing they wanted was any disruptions in the railway. But the other thing that they didn't want was Nazi symbols on those railway cars. So they were, they were all taken off and uh, there were piles of them around and a lot of U.S. vets brought them home because, you know, they're, they're very big and, you know, uh, exquisite, I guess you'd say very well made for something like that. And, you know, it's the National Eagle. I'm going to flip it around here so you can see the back. And they were held on with these bolts and a lot of times you see them the bolts are broken they literally would take a pry bar and just break them off of the trains sometimes there'll be cracks in them this one happens to be a fairly decent one when they broke the bolts off um, it didn't crack the eagle at all um, it has the maker here and um, the here and the uh, the this is the metal composition here. Um, this is a formula they used. Now, again, um, with the Railway Eagles, it is one of the very desired items in the Third Reich collecting world. 
Um, and so there are fakes of these, so you have to really be careful. Again, folks, don't buy one of these at a flea market or an, or an antique mall somewhere. Uh, buy it from a trusted dealer. We get these once in a while, and they always sell right away on our website. Um, I'm going to flip it back around. Um, they have gone up in value drastically in the last few years. Um, they used to be fairly inexpensive, um, but now they're, you know, they're pu pushing five, six, I've seen them as high as $7,000 now. Um, and there's various sizes. Um, there, there's the 24 inch and the 27 inch, and there's even one that's a little bit bigger than that. But it is definitely one of the favorite pieces right now. And um, I can only see the value of these going up as they, they get less and less uh, available. And um, you know, a few of them have come out of the woods lately out of old collections, but they, they tend to be one of those items that get a lot of attention and a lot of buzz. But anyway, you can get this stuff at our website. We vet all these items, we authenticate them, and um, get us Burmese